Hi there, this is Michelle from the Trinidad Coastal Land Trust, back to the Ocean Literacy Principles series and our discussion on the ocean's influence on us and our influence on the ocean. So in today's video, we are going to explore two principles. Principle five is that the ocean supports a great diversity of fascinating life forms. And principle six, the ocean and humans are inextricably interconnected. Covering approximately 70% of the planet, the ocean is massive and offers many different habitats for organisms to live. Environmental factors, like the temperature, oxygen content, and salinity of the water, constrains which organisms thrive in a particular area. For many marine ecosystems, the primary source of energy comes from the sun, the light of which is used by organisms in a process known as photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, these organisms use water, carbon dioxide, and the energy from the sun to make sugars. In the process, they also release oxygen as a byproduct. In the ocean, photosynthesis is mostly carried out by microscopic phytoplankton, which are themselves quite diverse and include bacteria and algae. They typically live near the surface of the ocean where sunlight is plentiful and, under the right conditions, these tiny organisms can become so numerous, they form masses visible from space. These highly productive regions, which are illustrated as the hotter colors on this map, are often in shallow water found along the edges of continents. Phytoplankton form the basis of a food web that includes numerous and diverse organisms, from small zooplankton to the largest animal on Earth, the blue whale, in Humboldt County, you can observe this remarkable biodiversity at the intertidal zone, where a rainbow of organisms find homes among the rocks and pools at the place where the ocean meets the land. You might notice a giant Pacific octopus waiting to throw one of its tentacles out to snag a crab, or watch the stunning colors and graceful movements of a nudibranch as it hunts among the drifting blades of kelp. Both of these animals are mollusks, which is a large and diverse group that includes nearly a quarter of all marine organisms currently identified. At low tide, more of the intertidal zone is exposed to the air, making it visible to us, so this is a good time to visit. In this ecosystem, nearly every nook and cranny is a niche that is occupied. Anemones seem to bloom when underwater, and at low tide appear to drip from the exposed rock. These predatory animals have a ring of tentacles around their mouths. These tentacles are covered in cells that have stinging structures called nematocysts. They're used both for protection and to capture prey. Wandering among the rocks, keen-eyed human visitors may see a gumboot chitin grazing on algae or baby sea stars tucked in the cracks of their craggly homes. And don't forget to look up the diversity of the ocean food web extends beyond the water to the seabirds in the sky and the marine mammals who may be resting on nearby rocks. It even extends to you. Seabirds like Brant's cormorants might be drying their wings after foraging for fish in the waves. Listen for the shrill cry of a black oyster catcher as it calls to its mate and probes the rocks for a meal. Notice the spots on a harbor seal's coat. The pattern is unique to each individual. California sea lions often announce themselves with rowdy barks that can be heard from far away. They tend to haul out in groups and can often be seen and heard along the coast near Trinidad. Tell them apart from the harbor seals by their external ears and by their ability to stand up and walk on their front flippers. The immense diversity of life you can find in one small area along the coast of Northern California reflects the productivity of this region and the diversity of available niches or homes. Over millions of years, each species has evolved to be adapted to the specific conditions of their respective habitat. Even if you can't visit the ocean right now, visit a natural place nearby and practice looking for all of the different organisms around you. There is biodiversity everywhere. In this video, we have learned just a small array of the biodiversity in the ocean, 
But it is also incredibly important to remember that humans are also a part of this tapestry of life and complex food web. Our lives are intertwined with the health and fate of the oceans, even if we do not live on the coast. And as we have learned in other videos, most rain and nearly all of the oxygen that we breathe comes from Earth's one big interconnected ocean. The climate is moderated through the ocean's physical and chemical processes, but these processes can be disrupted by people when we release large amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So just like the octopus and the cormorant, we are a part of this marine ecosystem and will thrive when it is in balance and is healthy. So let us thank the ocean for all the oxygen we breathe, the water we drink, the fish we eat, and the joy that we take from its beauty. And let us remember that when we visit the ocean, we are visiting the homes of a multitude of organisms, so we must be respectful of their homes. Thank you for joining me today, and please remember to be safe when exploring